OpenAI and Meta have been facing one lawsuit after another, alleging copyright infringement related to their training of large language models. The lawsuits claim that since OpenAI and Meta train their models on copyrighted works without permission, the models and the output they created for users violate the author's rights. But it is not looking good for the plaintiffs in these cases. As ruling last week in one of the cases, actually in the same court that will hear several others, came out in favor of Meta. Hi, I'm Prof C, and I talk about generative AI and its impact on education, business, jobs, and society. And today I want to talk about copyright in large language models. So what are the issues in these cases? First of all, that these systems are trained using copyright material. Meta has long said that it trains its models on copyrighted material. OpenAI has denied the allegations in all three lawsuits and has argued that regardless, using copyrighted works is fair use. Now, Elon Musk, a co-founder of OpenAI and a critic of OpenAI's switch to a for-profit business model, recently commented on the veracity of OpenAI's statements. One of the things about training on data has been this idea that you're not going to train or, or that these things are not being trained on people's copyrighted information. Historically, that's been the concept. Yeah, that's a huge lie. Say that again? Yes, well, these, AI, well, these AIs are all trained on copyrighted data, obviously. So you think it's a lie when, when OpenAI says that this is not, n none of these guys say they're training on yeah. copyrighted da data. Oh, that's, that's a lie. It's a lie, yeah, straight up. It's a straight up lie. Second, you can see evidence that these copyright works are part of the corpus or the body of work that has been used to train these AIs. For example, you can just ask them to write in the style of your favorite author. Here, I'm going to use one of my favorites, Douglas Adams, and it will produce an output in the same style as that author. All that author's works are currently under copyright. I can also ask it to summarize a work that is currently protected by copyright. So the authors of the original works argue that these outputs and the models themselves violate their copyright. However, last week, a federal judge threw out a significant portion of Sarah Silverman's lawsuit against Meta, ruling that the company's use of copyright books to train its AI system does not constitute copyright infringement. This decision marks the second time a court has sided with AI companies in this legal battle over intellectual property rights. In this particular ruling, the judge rejected the central argument that Meta's AI model itself is an infringing work derivative of copyrighted material. He explained that the AI system cannot be considered to be a recasting or adaption of the copyrighted works as it does not directly replicate or transform the original content. And you can kind of see why this makes sense in the examples I gave above. It is not copying verbatim Douglas Adams' work, or it is not taking that work and putting it in a new form verbatim, or it's not extremely derivative, or it's not directly derivative of his work. It's in the same style, but it's not his work. Or at least that's what the courts seem to be saying. The judge also dismissed Silverman's claim that every output generated by Meta's AI tools infringes on copyright. He noted that Silverman failed to provide evidence that any of the AI-generated content could be construed as a direct adaptation or transformation of the copyrighted books. He did, however, provide Silverman's lawyers with an opportunity to amend their claim along with the five others that were previously denied. Now, it's worth noting here that Meta did not challenge the allegation that copying copyright books for AI training purposes could constitute copyright infringement. This leaves the door open for further legal battles over the extent to which AI companies can utilize copyright material without explicit authorization. So we could imagine a new type of licensing structure or royalty structure for this training. So maybe there's a one-time fee or an ongoing licensing fee that gets paid to the holders of copyrights as long as that language model is in use. That might be an outcome from this. That might be a compromise that will be proposed by these large companies that happen to have billions and billions of dollars of cash on hand to kind of force the issue. Or maybe it'll be as simple as going out and buying a copy of these works instead of using 
what you can find on the open internet. This ruling aligns with the findings of another federal judge in a separate lawsuit involving artists suing AI art generators for using billions of downloaded images as training data. In that case, Judge William Oreck questioned whether artists could establish copyright infringement without demonstrating that the AI tools produced identical copies of the copyright works. He characterized the artist's claims as flawed in several respects. Now, the lawsuits against OpenAI are likely to have a significant impact on the future of copyright law and AI. The courts will need to decide whether OpenAI's use of copyright works as fair use and whether AI models should be treated as new creative works or tools that can be used to create new works. The outcome of these lawsuits could set important precedents for the use of AI in the future. Now, these large language models like ChatGPT are able to provide content in any voice or style at a scale that has simply never been seen before. But I think that doesn't matter, and my own prediction is that under current copyright laws, these suits are going to fail. It will take an act of Congress to upgrade our copyright laws if we really want them updated to deal with our new AI world. The only way that that's going to happen is if the large media companies put their armies of lobbyists to the task. Sarah Silverman does not have an army of lobbyists to deploy on Capitol Hill. And you'll notice that these large media companies are not siding with the artists here because they are planning to use AI in a big way to replace writers, artists, and other creative people. As I said, I know this may upset a lot of viewers, but I imagine that there's no way we're going to see Congress coming to the rescue for the little guy here. I mean, we cannot even get a privacy rights bill passed 30 years after the World Wide Web came on the scene. Well, I hate to end this on a sour note, but I would say that if you've made it all the way to the end of one of my videos, you are part of an elite crowd and you should definitely subscribe.